Well, welcome back to RD Works Learning Lab. At the end of the last session, um, where I produced my own copper mirrors and got some slightly improved results, uh, still didn't really get to the bottom of where I'm losing all my power. Today we're going to tackle the problem in a slightly different way. We're going to go back to basics as I call it. A long time ago you've seen me doing mode burn tests using acrylic. Now acrylic has got a wonderful property in that it doesn't burn, it actually evaporates directly proportional to the amount of power that you're firing at it. We can find out what power, average power is in the beam with this, but that's all it tells us. I've got two things to help me today. My air assist on a long extension tube. The second thing that I've got is a little program that I've written. The first thing it does, it runs for five seconds doing nothing except a very slow traverse. Then there's a jump and now it starts five seconds of burn at 50% power. So the plan is to work in two areas. What we're going to do is to do a mode burn test at the back there directly out of the tube. Then we should do a mode burn test just here in front of this uh, second mirror. And then we should do a mode burn test here in front of the third mirror. <clears throat> but basically what we should be doing is checking what comes in and out of these first two mirrors. And then once we've succeeded in solving any problems that might be there, we'll then start concentrating on the head. And there we go, you can see the burn going on. And it's as simple as that. And that's number one. There we go, that's burn number two. The head is moving, but it's only moving slightly away from us, so it won't affect the burn in any way at all. The first one on the right is directly out of the laser. You can see how nicely shaped it is and how deep it is at the centre. The second one is after the first mirror, into the second mirror. And the third one is into the head after it's come out of the second mirror. And you can see that I'm losing most of the power between mirror one and mirror two. So I've got to concentrate on mirror number one, which is the most difficult mirror to get to. But we've got to find a way of improving the performance out of mirror one before we go any further. Now there is something else that's rather interesting from this picture by way of beam shape rather than beam power. As you can see it's coming out of the laser as a nice round beam but by the time it comes out of mirror, the first mirror and hits mirror two it's already slightly oval for some reason or other and then by the time it comes out of mirror two and gets to mirror three there's something horrible going on. So it would appear that my copper mirrors are causing the beam to grow in size. I think one of the first things I shall have to do is to repeat this exercise with the original mirrors in because I know that they are flat. They might not be transmitting the power that I want, but they're definitely flat. Well, something else I'd want you to just take a look at with interest, especially if you've got this type of mirror housing. If you've got open mirrors, then this may not quite affect you in the same way. But because the mirror is laying across at 45 degrees, obviously you will always have an ellipse shape that the beam is firing into. I've got about 12 millimetres of usable mirror width, not 22, which is the size of this aperture. I've got to be pretty damned accurate when I come to set up my laser beam, because the beam is about 6 or 7 millimetres wide. And if I've only got 12 mil, that means I've got to set it within about two millimetres of centre. I thought I had a lot more to play with than that. So what I'm doing is actually making sure that I just clean the surface thoroughly on a flat plate here. And this is sugar paper, sort of thing that you get in scrapbooks. I've made these long studs with the spring on and a wing nut at the back, a dome nut on the end so that I can wind them in easily and then tighten up the spring afterwards because they were a bit of a pain to fight with against the springs. At least they do screw in very easily now. Look, I can just screw them in by finger tight like this into the bottom of the thread. 
and then I can tighten up the spring with the wing nuts. Now I'm going to use my pointer to get things lined up roughly. It was suggested to me that because I've got this bar on here, what I could do is stick a piece of foil over the front and put a needle hole through the front. I haven't quite done that, but I've nearly done that. I've put a piece of masking tape over and put a needle hole through, and it has the same effect. So thank you very much for the suggestion. Normally what I like to do with my pointer is to bring the head right to the front right hand corner and align my pointer with a scorch mark that I previously put on my head here so that I know that the two things are lined up before I destroy all my mirror settings and things like that. I haven't had an opportunity to do that this time so we're starting off from square one. Now the inner circle on my target there, the innermost circle, is four millimetres diameter. So basically I've got to aim my pointer at that inner target. I can't afford to be anywhere else. I really need to cut a hole in this rear panel because I just can't see what I'm trying to look at. I'm looking through the smallest little gap there and wherever I look I can't really see what I'm doing. So I just want it to line up on centre there so that I can do two, mo two more mode burn tests. So really all I've got to do now is to just do a, a quick burn test on there to make sure that the two things line up. So first of all I'm going to turn the uh, I'm going to turn my maximum power down to 20% because I don't like to do pulse tests at high, at high powers. I just like to scorch the tape. Oh, it's not too bad. So what I shall now do is use my target with a piece of masking tape. Do a quick pulse on there. And take it out and have a look. Well, it's just outside my two millimetre zone. We're nicely on centre this way, which is much more important than up and down because we've got a tall, thin avenue to work in. So I think that will be good enough to do a mode burn test. Well here was test number one, straight out the laser. Now what we've got to do is compare that one there with this one here. And I think you'll see there is no comparison. So conclusion number one, regardless of whether I like it or not, I'm going to have to stay with my um, commercial molybdenum mirror, at least in position one. Now let's have a look at the power that was coming out of that mirror. The bottom one is the commercial mirror and the top one is my copper mirror. I would say they both probably go 50% of the way through the material, about 4 millimetres deep. So it's losing quite a lot at the first mirror. Now bear in mind, I haven't set the beam up to go to this head at the moment. And possibly when I do set the beam up here, I may well mess up the setting just here. So the two things are tied together. So let's just do a, a quick broad spectrum test to see where the beam finishes up. And where does that finish up? Finishes up over here. I can't easily get to that one to adjust it. I mean, it's absolutely stupid. This is one of the key places where you want to adjust the mirror and you physically can't get anywhere near any of the adjusting screws. I'm going to make an executive decision here. So I'll just move that out of the way and I'll just ask you guys to kindly look the other way please. do just a quick fix in case there's ever a warranty claim. Um, we've got a little penny magnet here, a um, very thin disc magnet, a neodymium disc magnet with some VHB tape on the back so that it sticks to the inside there like that. And then we've got a temporary hinge here. I will put a proper hinge on but this is a temporary hinge just in case I get a claim in the short term. And there we go, just a little temporary fix. 
Nobody will notice that. Right, back to what we were trying to achieve. So the point now is, <laughs> now that we've adjusted this one, we've upset this one. So now we've got to go back to the mirror number one and get that right. So we've got to bring that towards the centre again now. Yeah, it's probably within range, so I think we'll leave that. The mirror in this one works the opposite way, so we've got to be careful that we get it on centre up and down, because this mirror is working at a different angle. When we come to set that one, but it's good enough at the moment to do a mode burn test. And we'll run our test. And there's our comparison with the proper mirrors in. Two and three are now completely round. So the flatness of the mirrors is obviously a very important feature. So this one here is the output from mirror number one. And strangely enough, from mirror number two, we're getting a, a substantially better burn. Doesn't make sense. So what I should do is go back and repeat this test here. Well, there was something not quite right the first time because that was the first test of the output from mirror number one and that's the second test from the output of mirror number one and that's the output from mirror number two they're both pretty damn good there's not a lot of lost power there now that we've done our alignment across onto here I've got to put this on a little bracket that moves with the head Well this is the burn we've done after mirror three. That one there is out of mirror one. That one there is out of mirror two. And that one there is out of mirror three. We've gone round in a full circle and we've got back to the original molybdenum mirrors. Uh, we still haven't changed anything with the power at the work face. We've still got 30 watts. Um, but we can clearly see that there is something significant happening after the third mirror. We're getting quite a large 8.5% loss through the lens, which seems a bit unreasonable. Um, I tried cleaning the lens and that doesn't help a great deal. Um, so I've got an HQ lens on order in an attempt to see if I can reduce that loss. Now I'm only hunting a few watts, which seems a little bit silly, but um, I am finding it fascinating that I can make my own copper mirrors and get an improvement. Now the mirrors that I made were obviously not flat enough so I think I'm going to venture forward and try with my garage technology to make some flatter mirrors. I think the other thing that you've seen when the machine is not having a hissy fit is that the mode burn is good. You can see the shape of the beam and also the power, the relative power of the beam at various stages through the process. If you don't have a power meter, it's a great tool for establishing where you're losing your power through the system. Now this is 65% power, which is 30 watts cutting, as you can see there, and it's doing it at one millimeter per second. Okay, it's slow. Oh dear, the game's been given away now. You can see what I'm doing. It's 15 millimeter acrylic. As you can see there, the cut is really nice and vertical. It's not dragging at all. When we remove this, you'll see the deep impression that I've got in my base plate. That's excess power. So I might even be able to run this at two millimetres. Look at the quality of the edge. I've got to live with it or buy some new mirrors. But when I can do that, why would I really worry?